Yeah, I think the big question is, is higher prices for staple food a good thing or a bad thing? You know, most of the poor people in the world are in agriculture, not just in Mexico, but in a lot of other countries, and they're growing crops and selling crops. But when you look at the poorest of the poor, the poorest billion around the world, and so this would apply to Mexico as well, those that don't have enough food to actually feed their families on a day in and day out basis, they are, when you look at the data, net consumers, even though they may be producing corn or other crops and selling them in the market, at a net position, they're actually buying more than they actually produce. And so it really depends on whether they're net producers or net consumers in the market. If they are producers and they're selling in the market, that's their main income source, then high prices is, of course, terrific. And uh, so these are the trade-offs that are out there. And I think that, you know, as policymakers trying to really promote the use of a crop for, you know, a broader use of fuel, um, we just have to be thinking, you know, what are the net outcomes when we look down the road? Are, are we going to be putting families in a position where they can't feed themselves or where they're actually going to be better off? I think one interesting point to really point out is that the ethanol business in the United States and the biofuels business more generally really did emerge as a way to help revitalize rural communities in the United States and elsewhere because food prices and crop prices were very low. And so uh, we got our wish <laughs> and we've raised crop prices now. And it's having all sorts of repercussions, both positive and negative, that I think um, we're having to grapple with in the policy community as well as just um, those of us that are thinking about environmental food security and land use outcomes.